Hey y'all, good morning. It's Sunday morning and uh, we're in my garden, in my Gulf Coast garden. It's on the Alabama Gulf Coast and uh, I'm in zone 9A and my name's Rachel and I've been gardening for butterflies and a lot of exciting things have been happening like almost the culmination of everything I've worked for because I've been finding all kinds of caterpillars in the garden this week and having so many caterpillar adventures. So today I just really want to focus on butterflies and on caterpillars and on how to raise them. And then of course I've found some other weird things happening and I'll show those to y'all. So let's get started. Later in the video, I'm going to show y'all a butterfly that is on these pentas right here. They love pentas. I would recommend growing pentas to attract butterflies because all the butterflies love them. So um, that is definitely a plant that you can grow down here on the Gulf Coast or in zone 9A that will do really well and will attract butterflies. Also yesterday we, we saw the snake and we filled these holes because the snake was out in the garden. So we don't have to worry about snakes in the wall anymore. So thankful for that. We have not had any rain for the past two weeks and so I've been having to uh, water the garden with a sprinkler and with the hose and it's, uh, it's been kind of difficult and everything is suffering because they just really want to be rain. Uh, have real rain from the sky so everything's a little um, just I guess you could say peaked but um, I was gonna show y'all all about butterflies so I have not found any um, monarch caterpillars or eggs on this milkweed this is that swamp milkweed but I come out and look every day uh, because I don't want uh, predators to get to them before I do and I'm just gonna bring them in when I find the eggs I'm gonna show y'all some eggs that I found uh, so I check the swamp milkweed and then I have other milkweed too so I check all of my larval host plants every day to see if I can find something we're gonna go check the fennel and the dill and the parsley for eastern black swallowtail uh, butterfly eggs and caterpillars and something that i've noticed and maybe somebody else can corroborate this but um, for me whenever they have a choice between fennel or dill or parsley they usually pick fennel uh, that seems to be their favorite I have a giant fennel that I had to tie up to the uh, fence right here because it fell over and it's you know on its way out and I don't see any eggs or caterpillars on it but here's something every time I find eggs and caterpillars I, well I've never seen I've never seen a black eastern swallowtail butterfly laying eggs like not ever so uh, and I've never seen them really hanging out in the garden it's like when I raise a black eastern swallowtail butterfly and I release it I rarely see it again like ever they don't hang out and they come in and sneak in and lay eggs in a sneaky sneaky way this fennel that's growing under the tangerine tree has looked amazing for so long and all of a sudden now that I need it the most it's looking scraggly and sad look look how it's grown up into the tangerine tree it's like it's super tall it's probably like six feet tall but this is where yesterday I found a ton of eastern black swallowtail caterpillars and there were some eggs on it too so uh, oh and I see a caterpillar right there okay let me zoom in so you can see it there it is and when you find them you should bring them in I, I mean if you're intending on raising butterflies because one time I came home for lunch and I saw some on my fennel and I said to myself I didn't have time to get them then and I would get them when I got back home you know in the evening and by the time I got back home something had come along and eaten every single one of them and I was heartbroken so here's another one and I'm just going to show you how I do it I'm just going to I'm going to see if it I can easily do it sometimes I can do it with one hand I'm just going to break this thing off I'm not going to be able to I'm just going to have to stop it and then do it 
so I just broke the little sections off that the caterpillars were on because I don't want to disturb them. There's no reason for me to hand pick them off of the plant. And I'm going to take them in and put them in um, a jar of water. Oh wow, look right here. An eastern black swallowtail mama is hedging her bets and she has laid an egg on the curled leaf parsley. So I'll come back and check this. I'm not going to bring it in as an egg because I have like I don't even know. I haven't even counted them. I've probably got like 20 caterpillars. So we're just going to leave this one alone and give it a few days and maybe we'll come back and get it. This caterpillar is big enough to turn into a chrysalis soon. And this is one of the ones that I found that was so tiny and uh, I put my finger by it to compare it. I was hoping that he would do the thing. They don't, they have this defensive mechanism where they send out these little yellow uh, orange anthers and this stinky scent but apparently he's he's doesn't mind me petting him <laughs> um, but he is about to turn into a chrysalis he is large enough to do it and so I need to go find a stick in the yard and put it in the container because I'd rather him turn into a chrysalis on a stick than like on these flimsy little uh, fennel sticks here's the other one that we found so we had two of them so there's that one. I'm not sure if that's some poop hanging from that thing or what, but um, this one is about to turn into a chrysalis also. And just a word of warning about cleaning out your container. Look at that. There is a caterpillar that has fallen to the bottom of the thing, and I'm going to uh, use some fennel to pick him back up, and then I'm going to dump the poop out. Here he is successfully transferred to the um, fennel. And I'm glad I didn't try to show you how to work, how to do that, because it was quite labor intensive. <laughs> Let me show you how tiny he is compared. Well, you know how tiny he is compared to my finger. Look at that. He is that little. I've tipped my cage on its side so that I can just slide that in and let it be tall. And you can do that. And then I'm going to put the cover back on it. But uh, I'm going to put some sticks in there. I'm going to take y'all to the crazy front yard so y'all can see some of the other um, host plants that I've got growing. I've got a ton of milkweed growing in the front yard. I don't have any, this is just regular milkweed that you can get at Lowe's. I like the yellow over the tropical. Um, I do have a lot of tropical. I don't know how it got in here actually because I never bought it on purpose but um, I'll show you the difference between just the plain yellow, which they seem to really, really like the yellow milkweed. And then the tropical milkweed is this right here. They will use it in a pinch, but um, they like the yellow and the swamp milkweed. They prefer that over everything else. So I've got a ton of it that's self-seeded in the front yard. And I've just thrown out some zinnias and Vinca, they love those. I mean, and they love uh, coneflower. Butterflies love coneflower. Like, they love them. So, if you want to have butterflies grow some coneflowers. Um, so, yeah, I come out here and I check for eggs because now my new policy with uh, monarch butterflies is if I find eggs, I'm going to bring them in. And uh, if you want to see if you can find some. But, uh, caterpillars like you can look for a telltale hole in a leaf and you may be able to find some but um, I have not had any luck with monarchs uh, in my garden yet they came to my other one over at the other place because I saw one laying eggs oh and I wanted to tell y'all I have never so if y'all see it y'all are being honored if you ever see eastern black swallowtail butterflies laying eggs then wow I'm impressed with you because they just come sneaking in and lay eggs I never see them I've never seen them do it I have seen monarchs uh, laying eggs but never never eastern black swallowtails they're just kind of like ninja egg layers while I'm out here I wanted to show you all my gorgeous zinnias that I'm growing look how huge this thing is I love it I'm loving this orange I just threw the seeds out and shuffled them around and they just all came up and I'm enjoying them so much.
and this is a new plant for me that I've never grown. It's called Tithonia. It's, it's Mexican sunflower. And isn't it lovely? This is the first bloom on my Tithonia. Um, it's just a, a very large leafed plant. As you can see, I've got a, kind of got some big plants for out here. I've got this pond thing that I want to put in and some other projects that we're going to do in the front yard and try to make it armadillo um, resistant. Because <laughs> uh, I've been really discouraged by the armadillos, y'all. I mean, just it's, it's really wearing me out. But this is another Tithonia right here. This one, this one, and then that one. We've got cone flowers and just there are so many um things of milkweed and oh look look at all these vinca that are coming up i just let and butterflies love vinca and i am happy to let anything that wants to grow right here except for weeds to just take over because this is just my crazy crazy anything goes kind of front yard uh with the no grass not a blade in sight. Well, and if there is some, I yank it out as fast as I can. But um, let me see. Let's, let's look at this. Let's take a look. So when I'm looking for eggs, and I probably am going to say this later in the video, I look on the underside of the leaves and usually up near the top because you may have noticed with milkweed, the bottom leaves start to turn yellow and fall off. And if that's a smart monarch mama, she will not lay eggs on the lower leaves they don't last as long but um and then when i come out here to look for like baby uh monarch caterpillars sometimes they're like up in the buds of the uh of the flowers but i don't see any yeah it's been kind of a disappointment to not have i mean because this is the most milkweed i've ever had and yet i'm like where where are the butterflies Look at this gorgeous zinnia. Don't you love the color? I think it's like coral something. Oh, I'm loving it so much. Do y'all love zinnias or what? I, I mean, they're just so easy to grow. Um, I remember now why I have these weird grasses all lined up like this. Like um, a couple of years ago, I had like a pot garden right here and I had all my things in pots like right in front of these grasses. And uh, so it was kind of like a background for it because uh, I couldn't remember why. Why on earth would I do that? Because it's, it's weird. And something that I let just literally just take over the whole garden by the end of the season, because it's, it's just for a short time and, and it won't last long. But uh, I let this passion flower vine grow up all over everything. I've got several different um, passion flower vines here, but uh, this is for the Gulf Frillaries. And actually I would have to tell y'all that the Gulf Fritillaries are really the most satisfying butterfly that I, and I, I usually don't raise them, but that I attract to my garden because they're so prolific and there will be clouds of them. I mean, you can come out here and there will be 30 of them just flitting around and having fun together. And it's just so cheerful to see so many of them. Oh, wow, y'all, there is a butterfly that has come along. I'm gonna to have to show them to you so you can see that there are indeed butterflies in the garden on the regular but just not when I'm out here videoing and I've got some more shots of this one isn't it beautiful it's a swallowtail this is one of the sprigs of milkweed that I brought home from my other garden uh, other uh, butterfly garden that I have in town because I saw a monarch butterfly laying eggs on it and I was gonna show you all just the trick of finding caterpillars do you see there's a hole in that leaf right there you um, might even see some frass some little speckles of black uh, poo and then this leaf is eaten and look ta-da oops got a dark brighten it up a little bit but there it is and this is you know was an egg that I found and it has since hatched and it's eating the milkweed and it's growing bigger and bigger and there's little dots of uh, frass in there. Do you see that? Wow. Oh, I'm not right. There you go. So that's a trick to finding caterpillars. Look for their poo, look for their leaves, look for holes. And then um, definitely if y'all are intent on raising monarchs, 
bring them in because uh, there are so many predators out there that are waiting and looking. They want to lay eggs in these and um, uh, turn in, you know, parasites. And it's heartbreaking when you find them this size and they've already had something happen to them and you don't know it. You can't tell until they turn into a chrysalis. So um, if y'all want monarch butterflies, the best way to do it is to bring them inside and raise them. So yesterday at Palafox Market, I bought a tree from my favorite fruit tree guy, uh, Palafox Market in Pensacola, and this is a Caracara navel orange tree. I'm super excited. I've wanted one for a really long time, but I got a bonus on it, and I didn't even realize it. I've already talked about this, but look, that is a giant swallowtail caterpillar right there. See how it looks like bird poo? I even thought it was bird poo. I mean, myself. And I should have known better, but so I broke off this whole branch and I put it in some water and um, and it's been eating these leaves and something that I'm going to do so that the um, caterpillar won't fall into the water and also to keep this in, I'm going to uh, tape it like this so that there's tape across here and it's just holding it right there. Um, but I just haven't done that yet. And that's the way I do it with all of my um, caterpillars. I'll uh, eventually, the ones inside, I'll tape across there and just poke in new stuff from the side so that if they fall in or fall down, they won't fall in the water. When I'm out in the garden, I will check my uh, citrus trees. And this right here is my tangerine tree. And I will check the new growth because that's where... Uh, giant swallowtails like to lay their eggs. They like to lay their eggs on tender new growth. Like, well, here's some right here. It's just really light. It's hard to see. Uh, no. Ooh, that's terrible. Okay, there. Um, but what they really prefer, what I've heard from so many other people who complain about it, is they much prefer brand new baby trees. They would rather strip a baby citrus tree of all of its uh, leaves than an established tree. So, so many people find those and on their citrus trees and they just kill them because they, they don't want them to eat their stuff. So I've got a lot of people that I know who bring me giant swallowtail caterpillars when they find them. Um, but I see giant swallowtail butterflies in my garden like a lot, like more than I see any other butterfly. They will flit around and they don't stay very long, but um, they do. They come through quite a bit. I also wanted to show y'all really quick. I've got another Dutchman's pipe vine right here. And this is a larval host plant for pipe vine swallowtails. They are like mostly black and blue. And my dream is to have them. I don't think I ever have. Um, but so I want to grow a ton of this and get those in here. Yesterday, I found those eastern black swallowtail uh, caterpillar eggs, and today they have hatched. Do you see these three black dots right here? Those are the caterpillars, and I'm going to try to zoom in so you can see how tiny they are. You see that black thing right there? That is an eastern black swallowtail caterpillar that's just emerged from an egg today. Is that not incredible? Do you see these two monarch uh, butterfly eggs right here? See how they're getting dark on the tips? Uh, that means that they are about to emerge. So maybe by tomorrow they will have come out. And this monarch uh, butterfly egg is not ready to emerge because look how yellow it is. It's going to have to take a few more days. Y'all, I'm so thrilled to get to show y'all this. Look, so last night these were just eggs and they were kind of dark in the center. And sometime during the night or just now, they emerged and these are monarch caterpillars. Do you see how tiny they are? They uh, come out of the egg and I think they eat part of the shell and now they're going to start eating the leaves. But this is just so magical. I've actually never witness this myself because I usually do not um, collect the eggs but I felt like I needed to uh, since there have been so many different kinds of um, 
um, predators around. So this is super exciting to see it right from the beginning. These eastern black swallowtail caterpillars are getting bigger and bigger. I'm going to show you compared to my finger. There you go. They are getting bigger. You may not be able to tell, but uh, yeah, they are just eating and pooping, doing what they do best. Y'all, I am super excited to show you this. This is Spanish moss. It was on my um, lemon tree and I got it because someone said that, you know, it might damage the lemon tree. And so I got it and I just draped it on this fence and look at what it's doing. I think, I don't know if that's a flower, but I've never seen Spanish moss do this. Look, there's another one. It's got several of them on it and I don't know if those are the flowers or what, but that is just too cool. So it must really like living here. And I'm gonna go get the rest of the Spanish moss that's on my lemon tree and drape it on this fence. And just wouldn't it be cool to just have it just growing all along here, just a big mossy fence. That would be so neat. This is where I got that Spanish moss from. It's hanging from the lower branches of my lemon tree and it's just in one little spot. And I, this is kind of where it is in relative, you know, relative to the garden. It's on this uh, south side of the circle garden and I'm going to rescue it because it seems to really like it on the fence. Cause I'm looking at it right here. I don't see it blooming like anywhere here. I think it's gonna like being in that new spot. All right, I'm just gonna start draping the back of this fence with all the Spanish moss that I find and see what happens. I also wanted to show y'all this uh, mountain mint while I'm back here. This is behind the orange tree and uh, it's flowering. Isn't that adorable? It's uh, I, I propagated this from a cutting from a mountain mint that I bought um, from um, East Hill Edibles and at Palafox Market. They're there on Saturdays. But I love how gray green the leaves are. They look kind of pale green here, but they're more gray green. And when they flower, you know, they're just tiny little delicate nothings of flowers. But um, they're just lovely. And they do smell like mint, and I think they're, you know, they they have manners. They don't get crazy. It's not going to take over anything. But I just, I love the color combination of, like, the dark green below and then this gray at the top. Here's a close-up of the flowers of mountain mint, and I'm just going to put my finger down here so you can see how small they are. But aren't they just so lovely? And I just picked some figs off the fig tree. It's uh, doing better than I've ever seen it do. It usually looks half dead by now. And right now it's uh, looks like it's grown about five feet this season. Look at how gorgeous that candy is that I just picked off that tree. Fig candy, y'all. So that fig tree is not mine, it's my neighbor's, but they don't mind me eating from it. They haven't been down in a while, and uh, so I'm sure they wouldn't want the fruit to go to waste. And I was gonna show y'all how gorgeous it is. Look at that. Oh, mmm, it is so good. That, I mean, is like real candy off of a tree. Grow some of this. It loves to live here. Look, the flocks finally bloomed. Is it not gorgeous? And I love it even before it comes out because the buds look so silvery, they just glow. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous plant. And uh, 
apparently it's native because it, I bought it from my friend Carol. And uh, look how big it is. Look, let me show you in re relation to my hand. Look at that. Is that not impressive? Oh, it is lovely. Next year, next year I'm going to get a jillion of these. I love them. You know what else I'm impressed about with these flocks? Um, and I hope it doesn't prove me wrong or whatever, but look how um, sturdy they are. They're not falling over. I think we're gonna get some rain tonight, but so I'll see in the morning what happens to them. But they're standing up by themselves and they're just so tall and strong and lovely. So this is pretty cool. This is a sunflower that grew from the sunflower seed that was falling out of the um, bird feeder. And here it's dying and it's done and I'm just gonna transfer it straight back to the bird feeder and we'll let the squirrels and the birds sow it again and grow some more fresh. I am so surprised that this little calendula is blooming. I started this from seed months and months ago and I planted several of the little seedlings right here in front of the rose arbor and an armadillo came and just like dug all around it. And uh, I thought that this thing was gonna die. I mean, it's never looked good. I mean, look at it. It looks pathetic. It's horrible. Look at it. It's bent over right here at the main stem. But look, I've got one. And then there's another bud. It is really a miracle because um, I didn't even know if they could grow in this kind of heat. Um, I don't think they like it. So I don't know how long this one's gonna hold out, but I'm so excited to have it. And this is where that calendula is growing, right there on the edge of the rose arbor area. And um, that's really kind of a miracle. See my little snake in the tree? There he goes. There he goes. So cute. Let's see if I can get closer. Oh, there's his little face. I think this is the guy that was living in the, in the um, was living in the wall. So I think I'm gonna get my husband to seal up that hole while I see this little guy in the tree. He's in the lemon tree. I bet he's looking for lizards. Oops. Hems is busy. Hems is very busy. Look at him go. Wow. That is just too, oh, <laughs> he's too cool. Ooh, y'all, it is hot out here. It is so humid. I am covered in sweat. Ooh, just dripping. Ooh, it's nasty. <laughs> but um, thank y'all so much for coming and visiting me in my garden. I have loved getting to share things with y'all and I can't wait to hear about your butterfly adventures. Oh, it's really exciting. I love seeing what y'all are doing. It's thrilling to me. And thank y'all so much for the kind comments. I love it so much. Um, I hope y'all have a wonderful week. Have wonderful butterfly adventures, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.